a little. So everybody got quiet. Yeah. Little. Ready? Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, June 24th, 2019. If we could have a roll call, please, ma'am, to establish quorum. Harry Meyer. Here. Melissa Green. Here. Terry McClung. Yeah, here. Vicki Schneider. Here. Susan Harmon. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. We have six. All right. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the, the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, get a motion to uh, so move. agenda. Second. Okay. Motion to second. Uh, can I get Mr. Thomas? Yes. I would like to move to move item number nine, the budget cleanup, up to replace or above item number one on new business. I'll second that. Okay. Anything else? Um, yes. Number two, the appointment of council member to planning. Can we postpone that since we have applications? You want to postpone it or Until do you want to remove it at this point? No, let's just postpone it to the next meeting. Defer it to uh, yeah. next meeting? Please. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you for All right. Also, uh, items uh, three, four, and five, we need to defer to the next meeting because our city attorney is still working on those items. Cool. Anybody have anything else? I have a question. Okay. Um, since there was really not a motion and a vote on splitting the agreed upon ordinance, could there be at least that agreement this evening? That's why the blanks are there, because it was, it was kind of in limbo. Ms. Green asked if, if they could be split out, but then there was no... All right, I guess what, what we're wanting is somebody to... Melissa, would you like to... to I don't know how we do this. Uh, Make a note of deferring ordinance for animal law changes regarding livestock. Okay. And have a second. Get somebody to second that. I'll second. Oh, okay. okay. Susan will second that. And the same thing with the ordinance for the animal law changes regarding unoccupied property. Okay. I'll, I'll defer that. I'll second that. And Susan will second that. Okay. So three, okay, four, I and wasn't five clear are gone? On what I was that, saying. Yeah, that's not what she said. Well, there wasn't a second on those two things, is what you're saying. No, right. I'm saying that the reason that there's a blank on the agenda was that there was a motion made by council in October of last year to write an ordinance that would involve both mm -hmm. portions. Then Melissa asked, I mean, sorry, Ms. Green said at the last meeting, she would like to see them split out and asked Mr. Weaver if that could be done. He said, yes, it could be done. But then there was no motion to change the original agreement. It's, that's, so it's sort of hanging. And I, I, you know, I just couldn't, I had to put it on here some way. Well, Mr. Mr. Weaver is writing two separate ordinances, from my understanding. Mr. W Thomas? Well, I think the point is there was no vote to write two separate orders. That's what I'm saying. Right. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So now we have a motion and a second. But to there was a vote last That's year to thing. not separate them. We needed to, we, that needed to be, sec we needed to separate it, I think, with the conversation last time. We voted a no year vote. ago to there was not no There was no vote on that. There was discussion, okay. but yeah. no it, vote. It, yeah. I'm sorry. It's do we need any of that to defer this on the agenda? No. No, at this point, we're deferring it anyway. Okay. So, Mr. Thomas? Well, I would wonder if Mr. Weaver knows what he's supposed to do. <coughs> I, Mr. Weaver? Well, typically, if it appears that it comes when it comes to me sometimes it comes to me and it looks like it is two separate ordinances that need to be drafted I usually go ahead and draft two anyway if there's if they're covering two different points and I did agree I believe last council meeting that it would probably be best that they be two different points if council wants them as one uh, 
I guess if the if that that is the vote that is on the table, maybe we do need to take one to split them or not split them. If can we as it stands now, apparently there's no vote to split them. Correct. Can we so take would be these deferrals and make it a discussion on how we're going to handle it? So next meeting we can have a finished product. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. We're just can we mayor. move on? I mean, it, it's either on the agenda or it's not. Yeah. Uh, oh. Mr. Thank Weaver, you. do you want to? How do you want? You want to defer this, or what do you want to do? If you defer it, you'll have two ordinances next time. Okay. Um, all right. I'm, I'm going to refer. The, I'm going to take this back, and we'll put it up for discussion. Okay. All right. Anything else? Discussion tonight. Tonight. Yes. That's correct. Good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. What are we taking off? Through four. Uh, we're just taking discussion? out item number two. And item number three. Okay. And four and five are discussion now? Four and five are discussion. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Get a motion to approve the minutes. So for moved. For June 10th. So moved. Okay. Uh, get a second. Second. Okay. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes that submitted signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> That's so moved. In your packet, you have two applications on the Planning Commission. One is uh, Kathy Hendrickson. Katie. Katie, I'm sorry. And the other one's uh, O.J. Smoley. For your consideration at the next meeting, and that's for the planning commission. Uh, tonight we also we still have a position coming up at the end of this month for CAPC vacancy, but tonight we also have a vote on the application for Dr. Tyson Bird. Get a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application from Dr. Tyson Burton. Second. Okay. Discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, public comments. Anybody from public comments? Good evening, Council. James DeVito, 5 Center Street. A little over two months ago, the state legislature passed Act 812. Uh, it is an act to promote hospitality and tourism, to highlight restaurant entertainment and hospitality options to establish temporary or permanent designated entertainment district and for other purposes. Um, basically what this uh, act does is uh, loosen the ABC restrictions on uh, open containers in public. It allows the city of Eureka Springs to establish an entertainment district and then to allow people to drink on the streets. Uh, it is totally up to the city of Eureka Springs on how you want to regulate this. I feel, given the discussion over the 30 years that I've been in Eureka about uh, late night business downtown and the complaint from tourists that there's never anything to do downtown, this gives us an opportunity to bring people downtown after five. I would encourage the council to look at this because it does provide an opportunity that we've never had before. I would suggest also to council that we do it in small steps, that maybe you entertain just a Friday night or a Saturday night, say from five o'clock on. I would also uh, entertain council to restrict an entertainment district from the intersection of Maine and Spring to Spring and Mountain including Center Street. So that's basically around a, about a three block area. There's a lot of restaurants, there's a lot of shops that would probably stay open if they see people on the streets because quite frankly there's no incentive for the shopkeepers to stay open if nobody's downtown. It uh, provides an added benefit to the community of revenue. Uh, I think it's something that the tourists have been looking for for a long time. It's something that we've never had the opportunity to do before. I hope that a couple of you at Council will put this on the agenda so the community of Eureka Springs can show up 
hopefully, and discuss this item. I think this is an unprecedented opportunity for the city. I think we should take advantage of it. I also think we should work in small steps because if for some reason it doesn't work, we can always pull the plug on it. I would like to think that other cities like Memphis and New Orleans have proved that it can be effective. We do have police on bicycles and I would encourage the police department to have a visible presence, a visible presence of authority on the streets. I think it's something that's very doable. I think it's an attraction that could bring people here and hopefully in the near future after that, we could even entertain the idea of closing off uh, Spring Street from Center to Mountain Street and have a festival atmosphere on weekends. Thank you, Council. Don't yell into the mic. I got it. <laughs> Damon Hinky here from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I want to approach a couple of, of things. One is our Fourth of July fireworks at on Marble Flats, uh, which is just directly in front of the statue of the Jesus, uh, Jesus of the Ozarks, uh, that uh, will be visible from Main Street in all areas of downtown. I wanted to let you know the Chamber of Commerce will put out as much information as we can to say uh, where to see that. The To let you know the Passion Play is chiming in with that initiative, providing Carroll County $5 tickets for that evening's performance on Saturday uh, the 6th. So if you want a stadium seat to watch your fireworks show. Five bucks get you in. They will pause the play at 9.15 for the fireworks show and then resume it. They've also given free access to any other parking up there. So great, uh, a great place to watch fireworks as is every location in nearly down, at nearly every location in downtown. Uh, I'll shift gears right quick and mention what uh, James had mentioned, Act 812. I have been doing some research because obviously that's important to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, as he mentioned, it was a big deal for Memphis. So you can go down to New Orleans. I don't think that that's the level of uh, alcohol in the streets that we're talking about for Eureka Springs, but certainly I'd like to see that become uh, an initiative for the council and for the city to begin uh, having an entertainment district. I really think you can go from really the museum, which was a little more expanded and include all of downtown, to get the appropriate restaurants. We already do a few events that connect a lot of the different establishments downtown, and I would certainly uh, continue to perpetuate those through the chamber, through Main Street, and have some great uh, events that would encompass our nightlife scene in downtown. So looking forward to your decisions on that and certainly available for phone calls and information. Uh, I'll contact representatives, whatever you guys need to know uh, from us. I will get uh, on the streets and get the information back to you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. You said July 4th. Fireworks. Fifth, the sixth, July 6th. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell in here. <laughs> July 6th. Thank you. All right, that concludes our uh, public comments. Our first order of business under new business is uh, the uh, resolution for 2018 budget cleanup. Okay, a motion to discuss. I make a motion to discuss. Second. Okay, motion and discussion. Comments? Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. McClung. Um, I, I don't have anything in my packet on this and was it's looking at something that... It's deep in. It's number nine. Well, if it is, it's it's underneath something that I... should be almost next to the last. <laughs> Not in there. Does anybody yeah. else have it? There's nothing up my sleeve. Terry, I think you got a short package. Yeah, this I've got I've got the Thomas request, but... I don't think I've got the other. Ms. Meyer, do you have yours? Yes. Here. Is this it? Okay. Okay. Uh, Is that it? No, that's not it. No, that's not it? I thought that no. was it. No. Uh, Looks like that. Yeah, this is it. Oh, Here. That's the one. <laughs> huh? <laughs> this is the resolution. Oh, we, oh. We moved it. It's okay, sorry. Right. I'm just not here tonight. <laughs> okay. Any comments? Me. We all thought I know. <laughs> Mr. McClung, would you like to make a motion to... Uh, I'm not sure I'm qualified at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> would anyone like to make yes, a motion to a motion. Uh, sign a number? And uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, read resolution 
uh, assign it a number and read it the, regarding the budget cleanup for 2018. Second. For passage. For passage, of course. Second. Okay. Ms. McClung made a motion and Ms. Gr Green? Yes. Okay. Seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. 6 0. Resolution number will be 753. Resolution amending the 2018 adopted budgets for the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas for the year 2018, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure therein and for other purposes. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas has determined that it is in the best interest of the city to amend the adopted budgets of the city and, and whereas certain anticipated revenues and expenditures did not occur as previously budgeted. Now therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that Section 1, this resolution shall be known as the Cleanup Amended Budget Resolution for the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas for the year 2018 and the attached 2018 documents present the actual revenues, expenditures, and appropriation adjustments for the period. That the amounts for each expenditure classification in the amended budget are hereby approved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and they are hereby authorized and appropriated for the purposes set forth for the calendar year ending December 31, 2018. Revenues for 2018. In the general fund account, the amended budget amount is $3,552,431. Whoa. $3,552,431 with an increase of $19,486 and a balance of $3,571,917. In the street fund, the amended budget amount, the amended budget is $664,300 with an increase of $66,833 and a balance of $731,133. Okay, time to get in the rhythm. For lot fee, the 2018 amended budget amount is $287,600 with an increase of $12,970, leaving a balance of $300,570. The capital fund, the amended budget amount is $397,050 with a decrease of $140,571, leaving a balance of $256,479. Is there something in the air in here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Debt service. 2018 amended budget. Uh, it came out as $1,389,900 with an increase of $30,494, leaving a balance of $1,420,394,000. Court automation, amended budget amount is $6,500, is an increase of $7,040, leaving a balance of $13,540. For fireman's pension, the amended budget amount is $98,452. That's a decrease of $15,921, leaving a balance of $82,531. In the water and sewer fund, the amended budget amount is $1,847,700 with an increase of $10,664, leaving a balance of $1,000,000. $858,364. Lastly, in transit, the amended budget amount, 
$1,298,091 with a decrease of $180,118 leaving a balance of $1,117,974. So in total. Next page. Hang on. Please. So in total, the amended budget amount, $9,542,024, uh, a decrease of $189,121, with a balance of $9,352,903. Do you want to read the next page? Sure. Appropriations for 2018. <coughs> the 2000, uh, the account uh, general fund, the 2018 amended budget is three million four hundred sixteen thousand fifty three dollars, with a decrease of one hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred eighty seven dollars, for a balance of three million two hundred forty six thousand sixty six dollars. In the street fund, we have 60, the amended budget is six hundred sixty four thousand two hundred seventy five dollars. A decrease of $159,044 for a balance of $505,231. In Lofty, we have $270,500 with an increase of $29,361 for a balance of $299,861. Under Capital Fund, we have an amended budget of $396,615 an increase of $49,849 for a balance of $446,464. Debt service, we have $1,304,910, an increase of $134,408 for a balance of $1,439,318. In court animation, we have $6,000 amended budget an increase of $10,995 for a total balance of $16,995. Under fireman's pensions, we have an amended budget of $90,760, have an increase of $13,955 for a total balance of nine for a total balance of $104,715. Under water and sewer fund, we have $1,555,000. $199, an increase of 217, no, a decrease of 217,191 for a total balance of $1,338,008. In transit funds, we have a 2018 amended budget of $1,188,419, decrease of 93989 for a total balance of $1,094,430. For a total amended budget for 2018 of $8,892,731, a decrease of $401,642, and for a total balance of $8,491,088. Passed and approved by the City Council on this day of 2019. All right, uh, that brings us up to uh, our next ordinance. The next discussion is uh, discussion for uh, ordinance of the animal law changes. No, it's the Ming Street. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Pardon me. It's the appeal uh, number one under new business appeal conditional use permit decision for Ming uh, Street. Daryl Gleason. Do you have a meeting? No. Get a motion to discuss. I move to discuss um, for Ming Street. All right. Ms. Snyder? Um, can we have Ann up to the mic, please? Beg your pardon? Can we have Ann Sally up to the mic, please? Sorry. Soleil. 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 Okay, and I have seen you guys did, uh, spot the, the site visits and all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, no, we could not do a site visit. He doesn't live here, and we're not allowed on private property without permission. Okay, so of all the people in that area, the majority said no. The, the appeal form that you have, there were six letters sent out. We got four back. However, only three were actually within the 200 foot, which made it 50%. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, and I got in emails two letters. And, and one, I kind of felt it was like a dyke or something, D-Y-K-E. I don't have copies okay. of them. They're in the file. Well, we didn't get any either. Okay. So I yeah. felt like there was another one that came in. I have it. Do you? A copy of it. Would you like to read it real quick? Well, no, I read it. Oh, okay. I read it. I just. I, I don't know. I can't tell you of the six people who the three people were that were right. the property owners. But I. Okay. It's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. Okay. Is that in critical? I'll look for it if you want it. Do you not have the the packet that yeah. we have? Oh yes. Oh, yeah, we'll okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a list of them in there. Yeah. Could could I see the list, please? Is there a question there? Or do we need to no, it, it seemed like we've got one that just kind of came, oops, I got it, wait, that came in today or yesterday that oh. it seemed like it was a new one. No, it's one of the ones that was read at the planning. Okay. <coughs> uh, Ms. Harmon? Just my understanding of the ordinance itself as far as, or the the rules as far as how it, rules as how it applies to a cup being issued. Um, one of the, one of the criteria that the Planning Commission has to meet or has to at least acknowledge is if 20%, mm -hmm. um, if over 20%, 20 percent or more of the individuals who received letters, which would be those within 200 feet, were either opposed or were for. And in this case, they were they were, were over 20 percent opposed. 50 percent opposed. Right. Okay. Mr. McLeod. Okay. Um, I got a few things. Uh, one is, was this one of the cabins that Gerald Tomlinson built? Back when he had control of the lake and all that, and he and he had lot he built those as lodging, and it was part of part of his house and all that. And then he sold those off individually, and mm -hmm. and so I don't know if they had individual permits at a time when they could rent them out nightly or not. Maybe they did, uh, but it's it's. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe a sing single family lodging uh, unit is is suitable for overnight lodging in in uh, uh, R1. Is that not correct? It's, it's not R1. It's R2. Oh, it is R2. It is R2. Really? It's not historic district. Mm -mm. It's no. historic district. It's R2. Not Wait, no, that's okay. I mean, that's the answer. It's in the historic district. It's R2. Talk in the microphone. That's all I'm saying. How can it be in the historic district and be in R2? Historic district is R1. No, no. Terry, it goes into R2. Part of R2 is in the historic district. Okay. Well, right. if that's the case, then, then you know, if if it had it had a permit at one time, is that correct? I'm, I'm not aware of any permit that it ever had. I can do that. Okay. So my input in that is uh, uh, Glenn Booth did. We went through the file that's there. There's no record, so I can't say whether it did or didn't. But we folded it to City Hall and tried to look back because that's what I was trying to prove was that these were built for lodging. But apparently, either they just never got a conditional use permit after they quit initially. There's no record there to tell us what's going on. Okay. Okay. Ms. Green? Um, I've always said that everybody has the right in Eureka to apply for a conditional use permit. If they meet all the criteria, and there's like 20 of them, then they have the right to acquire it. But to me, they did not meet number J, whether proposed use is in harmony with the character of the neighborhood. And I feel like the neighbors decide the harmony of the neighborhood. And 
I'm thinking from what I read here in the minutes that we did get actually get four letters uh, opposing. I got one yesterday, I think, from, I think it was a DY, a dyke, um, and it's different than here. And the other one is the opinions of the adjacent neighbor, number T, T, and the majority of the neighbors have said no. And so I don't feel at this time he has met the conditions. Do I need to stay up here any longer? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Does anybody else have a question for Ms. Seth? No. Okay. No. Okay, now go ahead and sit down, if you would. I make a motion that we follow planning's decision on this and do not authorize anything against planning's wishes. I, I will second that, but I, I'd like Mr. Hinkey to be able to talk. Thank you. Uh, Daryl Gleason. There's no vote. What are you guys doing? You're making motions, and, and he's starting to talk, and there's been no vote. Uh, no, we're not. Well, yeah. you just tell me, I'm here to represent Daryl Gleason, so you let me know when. <laughs> well, do we need to do Carmen. anything at this point? Because yeah, we would say yes or no. There, there's a motion. There is a motion. It's just for discussion right now, and this is the appeal, so, uh, so the we council are, has to. I think Mr. Weaver, correct me if I'm. Not mistaken, council has to make a decision whether to uh, hold the appeal or not, or whether to decide to deny it. Is that correct? You would, be, yeah. The council will make a decision whether to uphold planning's decision, yes, or, or grant the appeal and reverse the planning commission. Okay, Mr. Thomas. Well, I just would like to say that I think it's totally inappropriate. To, to take a vote on approving or disapproving when that the person appealing has not even spoken yet. At least he ought to be able to present his side of it. I'll, I'll withdraw my second. I'll withdraw the motion. It's okay to have the motion. Look, yeah, this is okay. discussion. And then you and then discuss and then you vote on it. Okay. I mean, it's, it's all right to have the motion and the second. All right, well, it's the discussion motion time. was deferred. It was taken back in seconds. Taken back, so... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, Mr. I'm on. Hinkie, you're on. <laughs> All right. Damon Hinky here representing Daryl Gleason. Uh, Daryl Gleason came to me uh, on a phone call and said, hey, uh, this is where I live. This is the circumstances. I'm a, a musician. I travel the world, and I am going to be in Eureka Springs two to three times a year. I said, where's the house? And having lived on Douglas, I knew where his house was because you really have to hunt for this house to see it. It's about 40 yards up the hill. In fact, I want to give you uh, some information. The, the printer... There are photographs uh, uh, they, yeah. in the packets. They're different. A uh, few of them are different, but also the list of the different things. Uh, like photographs. But I, I think that you are probably familiar with some of these. Uh, the, the, the first point that I wanted to make that you've already uh, are aware of is R2. That was the first thing I asked Daryl. Is this a R1 house? And I double checked with Glenna. When it's R2, then it's a, a little different circumstance to, to move forward. If it's R1, I would have told him forget it. it didn't, it's not something that we wanted to try. The second thing uh, that I thought was the fact that it's not necessarily built as a family residence. I thought that that gave it some... Uh, a reason to, to follow up with uh, planning in the city council. And honestly, I'm with you on the neighbor situation. That's uh, the only thing that I can say for a lot of the neighbors is those are second homes and people who aren't here full time chiming in on a situation that most of the guests are going to come and go when they're not even on their property anyway. Uh, so we would have to obviously ask each one when they're here and when they're not to determine how impactful it is to have guests next door. But it's certainly a consideration. Uh, the, the, the photos I just wanted to portray that this does have a dedicated driveway. You're not driving next to somebody else's house. It's not the little road that goes back li by Little Lake Eureka. This has a dedicated driveway to this specific house. Uh, it has a flat spot below the house. That was some of the neighbors uh, were worried about the fact that people would be parking at street level. Won't, it won't be a street level situation. Uh, it's easy enough to navigate into that next flat spot next to the house. As you can see from the bottom pictures, the house is truly tucked up there on the side of the hill. You, you would have to, to hunt for it in general. 
Yes, sir. Oh, I'm just oh. waiting for you, and I had a comment to make. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'll run through these quickly. Uh, I already mentioned the dedicated driveway. Uh, we've already talked about the fact that they were built for lodging, not as a family situation. Uh, they're small. There's a hot tub built in the deck. It's not something that you would necessarily put a small family in. Uh, although I am sensitive to having a population in Eureka, I wouldn't be here pitching it if I didn't think that this one actually would bring in tax dollars rather than provide a house for a small family. Um, the majority of the homes are second homes. We touched on that. Uh, th this is high density foliage. They're, the neighbors aren't going to see them. They're not going to hear them. And nice for the couples that stay here, they're, they're not going to hear the neighbors either. Uh, it's set up for two people. Again, this is not a $59 motel rental. We're talking about affluent people who will likely park their car, take advantage of what downtown has to offer. And finally, uh, Daryl's only going to be here three times a year. So from an economic development standpoint, I think it's a way to get some extra tax revenue out of a particular house that doesn't highly impact the neighbors that uh, is a genuine case for consideration for an appeal otherwise I wouldn't have wasted my time with it so that's that's my side of the story Daryl's a great guy if it doesn't uh, it doesn't happen it doesn't happen it's just uh, on the table let me let Melissa ask since well, he, he let's let the chairman run you fit yeah you <laughs> Mr. Thomas oh, sure. well I just want to to point out that you know uh, it really doesn't matter how often the other property owners are around because the code says adjacent property sure, owners right. they own the property. Yeah. So they don't even have to have a house. Given that more than 20 percent did not fine. want this, what what's the basis for your appeal? Uh, the basis is that it will bring additional tax revenue in, and just because they say that they won't want it doesn't mean that it's a bad idea for that particular homeowner or that particular house or for the city. Yeah. You, I, if you're saying I can't go against the neighbors, I don't think that that's necessarily what it says there. I it's, can't go against the code. Uh, it, it, I, that, that would be your determination. Ms. Green? We, we can go against code, but we, we need to have, what is it, three-fourths three of the sitting commission, or maybe on an appeal we don't have to have that. But we don't know if these neighbors are planning on retiring there. Sure. They, um, some of these neighbors are there every weekend, so it they really is okay. their, their, their home. And I don't think these people, I mean, the two letters that I got were very respectful and very sure. nice. They were not mean-spirited, but no. they just do not want this in their neighborhood. Yeah. And they have that right. Sure. Ms. Snyder? Since it's highly inappropriate to bend, ignore, or otherwise screw around with laws we've made in view of cash, I make the motion that we accept planning's decision on this since they're the ones who know what's going on and have the letters voicing the disregard for what this was asked for. I'm assuming what your motion is to deny the permit, deny yes. the appeal. Yes. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? Mr. McClellan? Yeah, I just, uh, for my own benefit and, and I'm sorry I just haven't lived here long enough and I, I don't know where uh, R1 became R2 under I thought all the historic district was R1 that, as far as residential I mean it's the way I've always known it to be uh, and in R1 you cannot have that kind of lodging and is is not what it says in, in the book that R1 is historic residential. Is that not what it says? I believe you're correct. Uh -huh. yeah. So, how, if that's in the historic district, how can it be R2? Well, that's, I mean, that's, it is what it is, Mr. McClung. If I'm assuming, I have looked into it, but that's what the right is. Really is. So, Ms. Green? Just, just to clear up something for Terry. I had a house on Alamo Street, which was a contributing house. It was R2. It was in the historic district. Um, part of East Mountain that have historic homes and stuff are R2. It, it goes out. It, it really does. Well, I understand that the historic district goes out, and that yeah. and that when somebody does something in that district, they have to go to the HDC to get it approved right. because it's R1. Doesn't it's, matter. No, they have to go if it's I, R2. Well, that's, I, I guess you learn something every day. <laughs> this right, is my further, lesson for today. Okay. Any further discussion? 
Uh, we have a motion in it <coughs> by Ms. Snyder and a second by Ms. Green to deny the, the uh, appeal. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I appreciate it. All right, Thanks thank you. Motion was uh, approved to deny. All right. Uh, now that that gets me back, we sort of turned on the on track again. Um, get a motion to discuss the ordinance for the animal change law. Animal. So moved. Second. All right. Ms. Snyder. Okay, last year when all this was originally going on, and I still can't believe it's been this long, um, we had discussed at that point separating the, the number four and number five, the, making it two ordinances versus one. And what we had decided and voted on was the the dog part about the unoccupied property would be the whole animal ordinance is animals. The um, dog part was un was being written under the dogs. The mini pigs, which are the uh, pot belly pigs, that was other under the other pets and animals because it has been decided that the American mini pig is the proper terminology for all pot belly breeds versus your livestock type swine. We went through all of this last <coughs> year. So rather than have these separated, it's just two little amendments to the whole animal law ordinance that is already in existence. Ms. Green? The, the reason that I wanted it separated, it, Mickey's making a compelling argument, but we're going to, if we pass this, we're going to sunset these pot belly pigs. So granted, she's probably right, they don't fit into livestock, but it doesn't really fit into, one is, one is about in, in abuse of animals, and this one is just going to kind of be a separate thing out there. I mean, I don't even know where we need to put the pigs at, but I just don't feel that, I feel they're two separate ordinances. It, it's nothing to stop what we did do. It just, for me, it's just kind of clearing up and making it a lot easier in the books. Mr. McClellan? Uh, I'm trying to get this clear in my head. Are you, Ms. Snyder, are you saying that it's, that the one is a is a maxi pig in a mini pig skin? Is that what it is? It weighs over 200 pounds. I mean, I, you, you have a, you have a small pet. You have food. The and small pet is not time? food, regardless of your lien. <laughs> You've already made the offer. Um, North Little Rock. Okay, they have their thing, and they separate. And this is from Little Rock. They separate hogs, goats, and sheep versus the pot belly pigs, which, according to national wordage, should be called American mini pigs because they are not swine, which is an edible pig. And while, yes, you could eat a mini pig, you can also eat people. That doesn't make it right. How can you qualify a 200-some pound pig as a mini pig? Beats the heck out of me. Um, I had a 150-pound Great Dane for years. In fact, I've had three of them. It's not that's called not that, That's not that much less. All right, come on. Ms. Green. Okay, Mickey. When, when, and and I, I want to clear this up, but when I was researching this, every thing I came up with, the pot belly pig was considered swine. Now, they have separated them and said the pot belly pig is a pet. The rest of the pigs aren't, and right. I, I, they're not. These are not mini pigs. I mean, they're probably pot belly, but they're not mini pigs. Mini uh, pigs are like this, and they do no, have those. Not always. Oh, that, that's from uh, the bottom. Please wait. Okay, Mr. Thomas. I'd just like to say that all of the discussion was presuming the fact that, that pigs were legal right now in the city. 
there is a 1952 ordinance that outlawed livestock and it said swine and swine are like stiff haired animals with snout noses and short little dumpy feet I mean you can go to the dictionary and read the definition of swine big piggies and little piggies are all swine and they were outlawed in 1952 Ms. Harmon okay oh, I'm sorry I, um, I guess I guess I've watched city council meetings and I've tried to understand why we're doing this um, for pigs. My understanding is correct, is that, that I did read the ordinance that Bob is talking about. They have been outlawed. And so my understanding, if, if, if I'm completely wrong with this, what we're trying to do is we're trying to update an ordinance to allow one household, because I've talked to Jimmy, and apparently we've got one household in Eureka Springs that has two illegal pigs, swine, whatever you want to call them. They have snouts, they look like a pig, they act like a pig, they smell like a pig. We're trying to change an ordinance for one household in Eureka Springs. In the meantime, they're still illegal and we have not we have not um, addressed it as a city whether or not we knew these pigs were there 10 years ago whether or not we knew those pigs were there five years ago whether or not we it sounds like we've known they've been here and have had these discussions for at least what maybe up to close to maybe two years year and a half and we haven't done anything to address that they are illegal right now according to our ordinances but we are now in the process of trying to change this for one household um, I, I guess my concern is that if we're trying to change it for one household and we have done nothing there have been no fines there have been no no reprimands to this particular individual even though they are illegal according to our current ordinances then where does that place us if, if I decided I wanted to go ahead and, and get a cow or my neighbor decided they wanted to go ahead and get goats what they're going to say is they're going to say these pigs have been illegal according to the ordinance that have been on the books and whether or not that's two years one year five years ten years the city has allowed it and therefore you should allow mine and therefore because you're either changing an ordinance or doing nothing I have the ability to come in and say I'm going to get myself these animals and you should treat me the same way that you've treated this individual and if you don't then doesn't that open us up to a lawsuit because we've done nothing and or we're changing an ordinance for one household in Eureka Springs so those are my concerns because we've already had issues where we've had to go down to Fayetteville and we've had to cough up money because someone could prove that we did something wrong now I've heard in the neighborhood of these pigs that there was a goat a couple years ago that the city now I don't know if this is true or not because I haven't looked it up and I haven't gone to get the information but that the city asked for that family to get rid of the goat now couldn't the goat family say well you've allowed pigs and we could sue because you haven't done anything to them but you did to me was it a baby goat? Uh, again it was a goat so it was livestock those are my concerns we have done nothing as far as I know I've talked to Jimmy we haven't done anything about this one household that has pigs right now so um, I, I'm not sure you know I mean I guess if it if we had 20 percent of the of the city the, the population wanting mini goats or having mini goats then maybe we should address it but we've got one household and we haven't done anything after we've known the fact that there have been pigs nothing's been done so um, those are my main concerns and it's not because I don't like pigs or I do like pigs or I want somebody's pets being taken away 
it really comes down to whether or not the city can be sued because we've allowed it in, and or now we're changing it for one household and ignoring the other 1,998 people in town. So. Ms. Schneider. Okay. Your premise is wrong in using the word change. We are not changing an ordinance. We are updating because back when this ordinance was written, there was no such thing as a pot-bellied pig. Having talked with vets all over the area, they have certified that a pot-bellied pig is to swine as a dog is to wolves. <coughs> Excuse me. All we're doing is updating what is a new breed of animal. We do not raise a pot-bellied pig to eat for dinner. Ergo, it's not livestock. It's an actual pet. Some are a little bit bigger than others. It depends on who they got bred with because of, there's like half a dozen or more, I forget now how many it was, of various kinds of pot belly pigs. That's why nationwide it's been said we need to refer to them as American mini pigs because that encompasses all pot belly breeds and mixtures thereof. We have in this ordinance that we had submitted to be written in a whole list of proper care, the cleaning, so on and so forth. The fact that these two pigs and any others at that time, it's been almost a year, uh, get registered with the city so we know we have them and that no more would be permitted and there is a sunset clause of 2030 which is going to be right around the natural end of their lifespan. In the meantime, no more would be permitted. These animals are a new breed. It's hard to believe with everybody going extinct, but these are actually a new breed of critter. Just like they keep coming up with new breeds of dogs. It's the same thing. Now, because these have been allowed, and there used to be a pig that lived down on Main Street, and it wandered and meandered up and down Main Street all it wanted. This was years ago. The city never did anything. Pot belly pigs are also properly trained for people with disabilities like epilepsy and stuff like that. We had one of our local people who was temporarily living elsewhere. Her pot belly pig saved the whole family from the house burning down. These are not just livestock. These are a special breed and they are a special pet. And if we follow what we agreed to last year, they will be the only ones in town until either they pass on or the family moves on, whichever comes first. In the meantime, no more can come and we are not changing a law, we are merely updating. And if you need to, yes, we could put this in, in November to a vote of the people. Mr. Meyer? Uh, I thought they were getting these cop belly pigs. They started it. And they eat them in Vietnam. Well, they eat dogs and they cats, too. Switch. They eat Please. dogs and cats, too. Mickey, Mickey. They're livestock. Most anybody will call a pig a livestock. And... Okay, you want to write an ordinance that allows, that calls a pig a pet? Well, okay, how big a pig do you allow? Uh, they get up to 400 pounds. I know that for certain. I've seen them. Uh, they get big. Uh, I don't know. As Susan said, we've allowed these animals to reside in the city without an ordinance that that allows them to be here. I don't, I think we're wasting too much time. Mr. Thomas? Yes, I'd like to make a motion. I move that the mayor proceed to inform appropriate officials and that they can implement 1952 ordinance, which of which most city officials were unaware until about three weeks ago. That's my motion. Implement it. Implement the 1952. Second. All right. We got a motion and a second. Discussion. Ms. Green. I, I have a question for Mr. Weaver. Mr. Weaver, the, the city has been complacent with not 
if we're going to follow that they are livestock, not enforcing it. Do these, if we decided to enforce this law, does the owner of these pigs, it, are we going to be sued for that, for allowing them to exist and then all of a sudden saying, nope, we're going to enforce the law? The truth of the matter is you can sue anybody for anything. The <laughs> question is, can you win? Okay, I guess that's the question I want. My best speculation is, no, they would not win. But it might become a protracted lawsuit in order to have that issue decided by a judge. Okay. Not enforcing a particular law, if uh, Mr. The statement that was just made that most counsel didn't know about it until a few weeks ago, is believed by a judge. Certainly a judge would not have grounds to find that the city had been complacent. And as far as enforcement goes, just because a police officer sees five cars go by 12 miles over the speed limit doesn't mean he has to stop all cars. He can stop the first one in line, he can stop the last one in line, he can stop the one in the middle. Or if he can manage to stop all of them, he can do that. But officers don't have to equally get them all in order for any one of the five to be guilty if they're all speeding. And so if someone is violating the law and possessing livestock within the city limits, and the mayor is directed, or the mayor on his own, either one as chief law enforcement officer for the city, directs the police department or the animal control to cite the person, they certainly can be cited. And it's not outside the realm of the jurisdiction to do that. Ms. Schneider. Um, Eureka being what it is to avoid a citywide protest, I would highly suggest that this get put before the people to make a decision in November. Because if you sit there and actually think you're going to take away somebody's pets just because one person gets a bee up their butt, you're going to be pretty much surprised at the reaction of the city. I don't know how many of y'all have bothered to talk to anybody, but so far it's been like 90% leave the pigs alone. I have in my packet letters from that whole neighborhood area. The only one who not, did not respond pro or con was Susan. Everybody else was 100% for the pigs and leave them alone. And that's in that whole surrounding area. Ms. Harmon? Um, I, I'm not, I've asked for the letters. I did ask for the letters. They're right here. Nobody ever asked told me. There was no record of letters. My I offered them. Can I talk? Just let me finish. I was never asked to write a letter. I am in close proximity to these pigs. I was never asked. According to several of the um, homeowners in that area, they were not asked either. So I would love to see these letters and it would behoove us to know whether or not they're renters or they are actually property owners. Property that owners. Makes a huge, that makes a huge difference. Property owners. I'd like to call okay. the question, please, Mr. Wynn. Thank you. I have a motion to call the question. Get a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, Motion to call the question for uh, going ahead and enforcing the the uh, laws that are on the books. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Roll call. Oh, roll call. Sorry. This roll call is a vote on calling the question. Calling the question. Right. I'm calling the question. Yes. yes. Bring it to a vote. measure. Which question? To bring it to a vote. Mr. McClung. <coughs> Mr. McClung? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Mr. Mutt? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Green? No. 
Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Snyder? No. Ms. Harmon? Yes. 4-2. Okay, motion passes. All right. Motion on the table is to... That's, you want to reread the motion? Please, ma'am. Uh, the gist of it was to have the mayor enforce the, well, the law. I understood it is have the mayor uh, and see that the law is enforced. Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. And the second was? Uh, Mr. McClung. All right. So a motion been made in the second uh, to have a roll call. Explain the question, please. Enforcing law, I mean taking the pigs away? Yes. Okay. Ms. Snyder? Whoops, wait a minute. What's the question? Are we in discussion or what? Well, I, I think... The I thought the motion was to call the question. The question is to bring it up to a vote. Right. That stops all discussion. Well, I think you made a, a, a wrong answer to Ms. Schneider. So well, which, what in she said, does that mean we have to remove these pigs? And I think the lawyer said very clearly that it doesn't mean that anybody has to remove anything. Then what do you expect the mayor to do? Well, no, no, that's, we're getting can, off subject. Can you, can you read what the motion is and we vote? That's what we're supposed to be doing. The decision has already been made to vote. On the question yes. was, can, can we can you can read, read their motion so we all understand what the motion is? For the to see to it that the laws enforced. Okay. Are you good with that, Mr. Thomas? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Voting. Ms. Schneider. No. Ms. Harmon. To enforce the law, correct? Yes. Has yes. Yes. the pigs? Mr. McClung. Yes. Ms. Green. No. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. 4 2. Thank you. Okay. You know, we actually took this out of order, <laughs> uh, but I guess that could bring us that eliminates the, um, the question about establishing an ordinance for the animal law. So we're still going to have the ordinance for the unoccupied per property. Do what? It takes off five and keeps four. So. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, then we get back to uh, six. Six. Uh, resolution to set a public hearing date for vacating alley below Kimberly, Kimberly Alley. Motion to discuss. Second. Second. Uh, okay, we have a resolution in front of us setting a date for a public hearing for vacating this alley. Uh, oops. I don't have it. Where is it? I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. No problem. Um, all right. Resolution to set the public hearing for vacating the alley between blocks 18 and 19, Ryan Armstrong Survey. Oh. Is that wrong? Uh, you are correct. That is it. Today was just one of those days. Could you pass these down, please? Oh. Okay. Okay, this, all right, I'm sorry. I'm going to borrow this. You keep one of those? Oh, let me keep one, please, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Can you one? There's an extra one. May I recommend a date? Okay. Uh, uh, July 22nd. Well, let's see if we, okay, we can do that in a minute here. Okay. Uh, get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. And Mr. McClellan. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a uh, motion that uh, we have uh, been presented with a resolution uh, in regards to this. And, uh, and that is the first step in getting our approval and I've looked over the application everything looks good um, and I would like to make a motion that, that we uh, assign the resolution a number and read it for passage regarding this vacation date of July 22nd huh and setting a date of July 22nd 
Set a date of July 22nd. Absolutely. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. We got a motion to uh, sign this a number and read for approval and setting the date for July 22nd. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Present. 6-0. The resolution number will be 754, a resolution to set a public hearing date for consideration of vacating an alley between Block 18 and Block 19 in the Riley and Armstrong survey. Whereas the property owner of all of Lot 38 in Block 19 and all of Lot 6 in Block 18 in the Riley and Armstrong survey has submitted a petition to the City of Eureka Springs to vacate an unopened alley running east and west between, yes. lo Pardon me? between Lot 38 in Block 19 and Lot 6 in Block 19 and whereas the signed petition was submitted to the council in regular session on June 24, 2019, along with a copy of the plat showing the streets and adjoining lots, and whereas Arkansas Code ACA 14301302C provides that the city council shall, by resolution, fix a day for the hearing of the petition filed to vacate a street or alley, and whereas the law further directs the city clerk to give notice of the meeting by publication once per week for two consecutive weeks in some newspaper published in Carroll County, Arkansas and having general circulation in the city. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the petition to vacate the above described alley is set for hearing on July 22, 2019 at 6 p.m. in the auditorium lobby of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and the city clerk shall give notice of this meeting by publication as set forth by ACA code, Arkansas code ACA 14301302C. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, get a motion to uh, discuss resolution for bids on city property. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, I have a resolution for that. Do we have one set up yet? Um, I think that we have one. Is? Yeah. I think this, what we see is number seven. Is it? No, is that's Are you talking north? That's right here. Oh. North. Oh, yeah, we don't have a bid. Uh, there isn't is one. Is that what you're talking about? No, we didn't. No, no, no. All right, I guess we do not have a resolution That's on it. this. No, this is the next. Mr. Mayor, can I make a motion that we postpone that for the next meeting since we don't have the resolution? We do have the resolution, isn't it? Oh, oh no, you're right. Okay, it is. We I'm do? I'm sorry, yes. Yes, it's number it seven in your packet. Number seven? Yes. A resolution approving disposal of surplus oh. city property through oh. auction. Get a motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Get a second. Okay. Well, I guess I. Second. All right. All right. Does everybody have a copy of it in their packet? Let me just find it. It says the resolution approving disposal of surplus city property through auction. Well, I might. Okay. I move that we set. Oh, yeah. That we okay. approve setting a revolution. You don't have to <laughs> Revolution. Oh, revolution. <laughs> uh, what we need is a, um, a motion signing a number and reading for a passage. Mr. Thomas? Go ahead. Oh, I'll defer. Oh, he's deferring. I move that we assign a number to the resolution and read it for passage. Okay, get a second. Sure, second. All right, got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? discombobulated. Uh, that's okay. We're pulling it together. Uh, <coughs> okay. I'm going to need that back, please. The resolute... Uh, the vote. 
Here we go. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. McClellan. Yes. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Ms. Harmon. Yes. Uh, Mr. Meyer. Yes. Six zero. Hallelujah. This, uh, the resolution number is seven five. Will be seven five five. A resolution approving disposal of surplus property through auction. Whereas the City Council recognizes the importance of accounting for capital items disposed of through means of auction and <coughs> whereas adherence to previously established fixed asset policy disposal of assets which determines that city assets quote shall not be sold without competitive bidding if the amount exceeds five thousand dollars end quote and that's from ordinance number 1689A <coughs> passed in 1995 now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that the City Council shall accept monies realized through the auction of 25 North Street in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. The auction of this property shall be by sealed bid, the bid opening to be held on Friday, July 19, 2019, at 11 a.m. in City Hall in Eureka Springs. The City specifically reserves the right to reject any and or all bids as allowed by the Arkansas State Code. How was that number? Uh, okay, seven, wait a minute, three, four, five, seven, five, five. Okay. All right, all right uh, next item is the destruction of obsolete records. Madam Clerk, I think this is... Yes, in your packet. We have not done this for several years, so we have quite a buildup of obsolete records. Some have to be held for four years, some have to be held for seven. At this point, we're, we have the money to do it, and we're up to 107 boxes. And I'm sure Public Works would love to have their basement back. Okay, get a motion to discuss. I'll second. All right. Any any further comments, questions, Mr. McClellan? Uh, I make a motion that we approve uh, the request for destruction of records. I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor of uh, destruction of the public records as required signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Thank you. All right, our next item is, uh, we got two ordinances here uh, regarding food trucks. Uh, the first ordinance is uh, one that's clarifying the use of the food trucks for special events. When we wrote the ordinance, we uh, didn't have an item in there about special events and how they can be operated. And that's what this ordinance is. Uh, Sorry. Because things were a bit discombobulated when the packets were being put together, you have a proposed resolution and there are stars out to the side. It says number two, but it's really part of ten. Sorry for the confusion. The only one that has asterisks. Uh, Thank you. Anyway, so if I can get a motion to discuss uh, the ordinance amending Title IV uh, on use of food trucks. Motion to discuss. Second. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Kim if she could come up because she got hit with this. I'm up. Kim, would you explain how this came about and what, what we were doing? I've this is, are this we talking is about the special events one? Yes, special events. Okay, so it's not the one with the asterisk, it's this one. They no, this both are part of 10. Yeah. They're both, part, both are yep. part of, order of item number 10, but yes, this is the one with special events. Sure. Okay. Uh, Kim Stryker, City Staff. Um, the food truck ordinance that's in your hands uh, came about because of the zombie crawl last year. Um, and 
the current lottery property that's downtown that has a food truck on it is um, Travis Holloway's parking lot right across Mountain Street from Chelsea's. And currently, the lottery um, ordinance, the food truck lottery ordinance, reads that it will be one food truck per lottery property. And there are four lottery properties in Eureka Springs. And so last year's zombie crawl proved that we could handle 10,000 people at rough count downtown, but we sure couldn't feed them. <coughs> the restaurants were run over, they ran out of food, and the perfect solution is to be able to have a food court, a uh, food truck court. And so this idea manifested into the now proposed ordinance in front of you. Additionally, <coughs> pardon me, there's one other modification in the special event um, food truck special event ordinance and that is to allow food trucks on city property during special events. So you're doing two things with this ordinance. You are expanding to be able to allow multiple food trucks during a city approved special event. You are allowing, the proposal is to allow multiple food trucks on a lottery property and the second modification is to allow food trucks on city property during special events only. All right. Questions from anyone? Ms. Snyder? Do any of these include health department approval of the trucks? Oh, they okay. are. Well, not having my books. Okay, thank you. Mr. Thomas? I'm just wondering when the uh, event application or whatever is filed, would they specify a number of food trucks or is that unlimited? The sentence on here says no limitations. I believe that the ordinance reads, and Mr. Weaver will correct me if I'm misstating this, I believe that the ordinance reads that it will state on the special event permit itself the number and location of the food trucks that you are proposing as the event promoter. Okay, yeah, listed on the application. Thank you. Mr. McClellan? Uh, uh, I'd like to see what a list of, of events are. I mean, uh, what qualifies as an event? Are there, are there certain uh, requirements or, you know, I mean, there's got to be something, um, you know, is that every day for May Fine Arts or, you know, what, what is an event? Uh, uh, I, I need more information. A special event, a city event, it's something that's sponsored by the city and gets a city permit. Uh, the zombie crawl is one. Uh, it's Oktoberfest? No. Yeah. Every parade? No. So the special event permit, if I may, the special event permit includes um, probably six or seven different elements. It can be a parade. The, the elements within the special event permit include parade, banner, uh, city sana sanitation, enhanced sanitation, more you know, bathrooms, trash cans. Um, Use of public property, the park, um, I think that's it. So a special event, um, the ones that have come forward at this point that are interested in like a food court kind of situation would be zombie crawl as I already mentioned. And there's another event that is also interested and that is a witch's crawl and that's also in October. Um, and both of those have 
expressed interest in keeping people downtown and being able to handle crowds through food courts. Mr. Green? What, and correct me if I'm wrong, isn't a special event from being on planning, we always looked at it as it is open to the public, meaning like a zombie crawl or if you were going to have a benefit to raise money for somebody. That could be a special event, but it would be open to everybody. That was, I think, in our definitions. That, I, that may be what definition planning used, but that's not the definition okay. that the city is using to permit a special event. The city uses the um, per special event permit um, for exactly the elements that I talked about earlier. Okay. Parade. If it's a standalone parade, for instance, um, St. Patrick's Day parade, uh, we had a, a food truck that set up, and the question was, well, this is a special event. The permit that was pulled for that was a parade permit, standalone parade permit. Nowhere does it say anything about food trucks or anything else. Okay. So, I, and. So I'm kind of like Mr. McClung. I, I would like to know what the special events are. I mean, I think this is great. I would love to see these food trucks there. Ms. Harmon? I just have a uh, real quick question. Um, one of the things, Kim, that you mentioned was that um, there would, we would allow during special events additional food trucks on the lottery um, places as well, <coughs> correct? Is there anything in that original agreement that that property owner or that current food truck could fight the city on allowing additional trucks on that particular place? I don't know what the I don't know look I don't know what it the paperwork looked like originally. So and do they have any rights to to not allow? I'll concede that Ann yeah. Armstrong is a far better expert. The general that. spirit is the more the merrier among food truck operators. People are more apt to stop in their opinion, in their feedback with me and working with them if there are more. It's more. And the second thing is there are only going to be as many in any given location as the building inspector confirms there's adequate space for all the components, adequate ingress and egress, so there cannot be an unlimited number because there are very specific parameters for each property. Okay, what I'm asking is, in that original agreement that was made with those particular people who won that lottery, is there any, do they have any rights to, say, fight having another truck come in, regardless of whether or not, you know, in, in the spirit of food trucks, they all think it's great. Do they have any rights, be it that they received that lottery, and the original stipulation is that there would only be one, one at that location? And I guess this is for Tim then. Mr. Weaver? The city couldn't tell them that they can put another truck there. The owner of the property is the only one that can allow the other truck there. Okay, so because it, it is still private owner. property. Okay, so it have to go through the owner. And the pro the property owner will have to make the arrangements if they don't own the food truck that is already there to make sure that they're okay with their tenant. Okay, so so but, they can deny. But the, the denial would come from the now, property owner. From the property owner, not from the city forcing the property okay. owner to Perfect. allow Perfect. to set up. Now the city by this ordinance can let them operate on city property if they can't get the lottery properties in the area to allow. Okay, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Meyer? Um, so this is a little different than, I know they had food trucks or food vendors at Pine Mountain during Life's Blues and Barbecue. Uh, this is a this is a different type of event permit. Okay. This is additional. Mr. McClellan? Uh, what about licensing? 
you know, what's what's the process for that? Uh, is a parade is is the length of the event only as long as the parade? If it's if it's a parade, I mean, I don't because uh, it can only you know it's for the 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 length of the event. What uh, what constitutes beginning and end? Uh, it's you know I, that's just uh, pretty vague. I, I'm not sure that I'm on board. No, and I'm I'm not on board with it at, at all as it is. Uh, Mr. Snyder, what's the difference between city approved and city sponsored? Because I'm used to city sponsored are the events that would be a special events, but this says approved. To get a permit. Wouldn't that be anything that you got a permit for? City approved is anything that has a permit. Okay. So that has a list of approvals. So what we're saying is food trucks at any event that has a permit as opposed to the handful of special ones that are sponsored by the city. Correct. Okay. That's my understanding. <coughs> now, so if it's an event, we can feed them. <laughs> Commissioner McClellan? Yeah, so that means like a, a three-day festival could rent the parking lot here next to the courthouse and put as many on there as they wanted. Or that would, that would fit according to some kind of scheme. I guess the only one I'm thinking about is you're thinking about something like the folk festival. Well, you got folk festival. You got the bicycle events that mm -hmm. that that, uh, that are here in town. And they uh, <coughs> while that would come up on on public property, but also be available for private property more so. Um, There's nothing I'm that not says sure. you have to go to private first or rent for the. I mean, they're going to come to the city and say, "I want to be right." In the middle of it, I want to well, rent from you, and that gives us the opportunity to say no. Although I'm seeing, um, I mean, that sounds like we couldn't just eliminate city property as far as that goes and make it private property. Uh, this is something we're throwing out there because this has come up. Uh, because of the need, I mean, this is one, you know, I wasn't real in favor of this uh, food trucks, but when we have so many people in town and there's not enough places to eat, this is a, a perfect example of, of something like this can happen. So what we're trying to do here is, is talk out how this can work. I'm not sure I would go along with vacating the parking spaces for three days. We catch enough grief from that from the merchants that I wouldn't be be willing to do that uh, but if it's private property it's private property anyway, Ms. Harmon well I know we're talking about all the events that we have right now but this would apply to anything that would come up in the future whether or not we do you know two events that are similar to the zombie crawl I mean it would apply I do know what Terry's talking about though as far as the parades go you know maybe there is a time limit maybe it's you know, an hour after on either an hour before or an hour after. Or, and or I don't, I don't see a problem with that. How, how? You, you I mean, what, that that's what this is about. Just talking yeah. about how to do it. So, yeah. Mr. Mr. Thomas, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just have a question. If you, if you're not wanting to give up parking spots, where, where is the city's property that they could use? It wouldn't well, it just wouldn't be. It wouldn't be city property. It'd just be private. Property. No, I'm, well, I mean, this is. This I just take city property out. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the easy solution to that. Uh, Mr. Chalmers? Unless, well, I was going to say, unless the area was blocked off. I mean, you could block off a specific area, like a street or something like that, right? I mean, you could block off Spring Street at the top, and you'd lose the parking anyway. So, therefore, you could still have the food trucks there on that street, didn't yeah. you? I guess th this is something, and maybe maybe what we need to do is think about, uh, would y'all like to, would would some of y'all be willing to work, do a workshop on this? Yes. Oh, yeah. Why don't we do that? I, I move that we... Um, in fact, we can do that on both of these. I mean, I, we can, I, I can discuss this next one and we can talk about it, but... 
we can put both of them up on the workshop. So, yes, Ms. Green. I move that we um, delegate a time for a workshop on these two ordinances. Okay, we'll, we'll get that taken care of. We can do that. Okay. I take uh, get a motion. To get a second. Second. Ms. Snyder seconded. Any further discussion? Mr. McClellan? Yeah, uh, I don't know that we want to tag that other one onto here yet because that, I think it needs some discussion on its own first. It, it may not. It may just be moot anyway. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead and do this one. At least this ordinance here. Let's talk about this. Put this onto a workshop. So, any further discussion? No. All those in favor of putting the... Uh, uh, food trucks at special events and a workshop. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, this other item, and it may be moot, I don't know, uh, but it came up with, we've been having some issues with our food truck, uh, people making the food trucks permanent, and then it comes up, they don't win the lottery, uh, and we have an issue where they've got to do something. We have another potential situation coming up with the same thing on Main Street uh, and he's wanting to put up uh, more or less a permanent put up a situation where a permanent deck around the food truck in other words so when he doesn't win the lottery again he's going to come up and talk about why he's invested all this money and uh, he should be able to have it since he's invested this permanent deck. This ordinance says basically the truck needs to be movable. And I think we can work with that somewhat. And also that there's no permanent uh, structures to be constructed on the site. You can always have decks. I mean, not, you can always have tables and chairs without a problem. Uh, but when people are putting up decks uh, and stuff, they tend to get permanent. And this is just addressing that area, trying to keep these food trucks from being a permanent situation. Mr. Thomas? The, the one that is building a permanent site, uh, I mean, he was told he could do that if he met all That's true. building regulations. I think the people should know that the permit is temporary. And I, you know, you're just making more and more and more rules. They are. And rules. But I can tell you right now, this one person is going to do it, and he's going to come back. I mean, and we could we could do for him. But this just this for. just specifies no right. permanent structures, Mr. Right. Mr. Thomas. That's all that is. Yeah. I mean, we can tell people that. Yeah. This just says no permanent structures, Mr. McClellan. Well, like the the fellow up on at, at next to the the over rear office, the property that right. he owns, and he's and he's doing that, and he's. You know, he has city approval to do that. Yep. He owns it. He operates it. Uh, so it's his, and <coughs> he, he's got permission for whatever it is exactly. I've not seen the drawings, but, but what, he's, what he's doing, and, and that's fine. Uh, the, the, the unit itself has to be a movable unit. You know, you're not pulling the axles off of it. You've got to be able to hook a vehicle onto it and pull it out without too much difficulty. Uh, now, that also in, in behalf of the fellow up there, uh, the, uh, the two positions that were pulled during the lottery in his area have not done anything. So, I mean, he's still perfectly, perfectly within his rights to operate because he was the next in line, the only other one that was there. So, and, and Ann is going to check to make sure that I'm right on that, but I'm, I'm just pretty darn confident that I am. Uh, so, uh, I'm not really sure I understand what this is about, because you can clean underneath it. I mean, his, you know, it's on the axles. You can take a hose and wash out underneath it or whatever you need to do and, and make it spick and span if that's what, I'm not sure what that concern is. I mean, they all have to be movable because they're just a trailer. You know, so I don't, I don't, they're not. Well, a mobile home becomes a trailer too, but it comes pretty permanent at times. 
But it has to be movable. I mean, these things have to. I mean, they're. I understand. They're I understand. I understand. They're. I understand. Because they may not be there next year. Yeah, Ms. Harmon? I guess maybe the question is what is our definition for food trucks or trailers? Right? Because in the. In the definition for them, it should stipulate that they're movable. They have to be able to sure. be moved. It does say that. Okay, so if that's yeah. what the ordinance is on, then if that's the definition of that of that item, do we really need an additional ordinance? Because the ordinance does I'm say... Sti I'm still concerned. I'm not as much concerned about the movable as, as I am the permanent structures, the decks and stuff on that. Okay, so I mean, uh, granted, as Mr. Thomas said, we can come back and tell him, say, it's tough. You invested the money. You knew it was permanent or temporary. So maybe, uh, maybe in this particular ordinance, then that sentence that Terry said, that in order to allow cleaning in the vicinity, each truck or trailing must be moved at least 10 feet every 30 days. Maybe you don't really need it. You need just the no permanent structures are to be constructed I, I, on the side. I tend to agree with that without a problem. So. Yeah. If you want to add this to the... Pardon me, I don't mean to interrupt. But no, I'm done. If, if no. you want to add this to the discussion, I to the workshop. That, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. To try and iron these things out, but that's it. This is just coming up with some issues that have come up with the food truck ordinance, yeah. Mr. Thomas. I just want to point out that in order to build a deck, you have to go to planning to get your plan approved, uh, and also with regards to the existing permits that are given out, the food truck ordinance has a date and says if they're not operating by that date. You pull the permit. I'm calling the question. The board decides we're going to do a workshop. This is ridiculous. Well, we are. This will just be adding this to the workshop. So, all right. Uh, that brings us up to our uh, the grant resolution for a fire station uh, number three. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Uh, we've had an opportunity and discovered that the uh, Rural Development Community Facility Program has a, a, uh, a grant that's uh, up to $50,000 and uh, we felt that this would be a good appropriate for taking the, the fire station across the street to develop it uh, back into a, a community area, community center for the city. So that's what this is offering. Uh, Allowing us to apply for the grant uh, with a matching of sixteen thousand uh, dollars for a total match of a total project amount of sixty six thousand dollars six hundred and sixty six dollars. So, if I can get a motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. Second. I'm sorry, I should have done this again with. <laughs> All right, Ms. Green. So the auditorium basement's off the table. Not necessarily, no. Okay. That's, that's, that's still on the table. This okay. is just an additional grant that's okay. allowing that to, to be cleaned up over there. <coughs> Mr. Thomas? This says that uh, if awarded, use the community yeah, facility good. grant to rehabilitate space for the purpose of moving all city meetings to a fully accessible facility. I would not be able to vote for this because it would be overriding a previous vote of council which says that council meetings will be moving into the gym and I don't think yeah. we can't just ignore that vote wasn't the grant denied uh, yeah the grant I did get a notice that the grant was denied for the auditorium but that doesn't mean that we have we're not going to be able to still do it so you understand your point mr. Thomas uh, any other comments, Mr. McClellan? You say that you received notice that the grant was turned denied. down for the yes, auditorium. Yes, notice yesterday, I believe, that the grant was denied for the auditorium. And, and I'm sorry, I, I, for some reason I cannot find this resolution. Number Thank 11. You. Number eleven in your packet, Terry. Ms. Harmon. What was the um, what was the um, grant? What was the total on the grant for the auditorium? I want to say it was a hundred and something thousand dollars. 
I'd say 125, but that's matching a third of that. And I think the total project was 166,000. If I'm not, I don't know, something like that. Ms. Snyder? Is this, is this time sensitive, this resolution? Or uh, is there one pending or something? I think, I'm not sure what the time, it is time sensitive and it's, we've got to have this application in. Okay, so we have definitely not gotten the grant for downstairs. We, have, we did not get the grant for downstairs. So we either find a rich person or we look elsewhere. Well, stay here. find the money within our city budget. That's correct. So we don't know if we get this or not, so at least if we okay it, we'll have something for in case of. Well, that's possible. All right. Mr. Thomas? Uh, the, if you have 160000 projected costs for the gym, we've already set aside $50,000 in this year's budget and we're going to be selling the Norris Street property. So I think it's still very feasible. Plus, if you look at our 2018 budget cleanup resolution, we went, we did much better than we had anticipated. So there is extra money there. But the question I have is for Mr. Weaver, with regards to the second paragraph, can we actually vote to do something that overrides a previous vote of a city council? You can certainly change any resolution by a new resolution. This one doesn't necessarily have language in it that allows it to supersede automatically, but that language could be added to it, or you could remove the wording about the meetings. You could remove the word all. In other words, we could say to rehabilitate space, rehabilitate the space for the purpose of city meetings in, a, in an accessible structure. Yeah. And that would not take away anything that the council has already done. Ms. Green? Um, if we were to apply for this grant, we get it, and then we say, now we really want to do the auditorium. What happens to this grant? Do we just give it back or? No, well, we'd still do the grant. I mean, if we get if we get it accepted, we can still do that, and we can still do the auditorium. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Cities very rarely have space that they can't find a use for. Okay, <laughs> that's true. That is true. Mr. Thomas, I, I you know I, I I would agree with that. You know, you can always use more space, but I'm very concerned that this is just an attempt not to move to the gym. Because obviously we, you know, we've been waiting for a year and a half now, and nothing—not a nail has been driven. Nothing. Uh, why, and as I understand it, this grant could be used to restore the firehouse as a historical firehouse, which would could then become a tourist attraction right across the street from the, the city hall and the auditorium. Uh, I, I think it would be. In fact, I'm going to move that we say. Whereas the city of Eureka Springs would, if awarded the community facility grant, rehabilitate the space as a historical fire station and make it open to the public. What if we end up needing it? What if we end up needing it? What if we, end up, what if we make that a public space and we end up needing another public space? He said we could always change yeah, it. Wait, wait, please, please. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? What's the motion? Right. Motion to change the wording from rehabilitate the space for the purpose of moving all city meetings to for the purpose of making, restoring a historic fire station. Is that correct? Right. I'm not hearing a second, Ms. Harmon. <laughs> Ms. Harmon? I just have a question about the 50000 that we allocated originally. Was that specifically for the auditorium, or did we allocate it for purposes of whatever? I thought it was specifically for the auditorium, Thanks correct? for the auditorium. So we wouldn't be able to use it in this case. Well, we can find another 16000 somewhere else. Okay. Mr. McClellan? Okay. Um, so, in my mind, the fact that we were turned down for the grant for her, for here, 
in the basement kind of makes that vote moot anyway because it was everything we were doing was basically predicated on the fact that we would get that grant and that would that would be a big part of uh, the money to to do everything um, you know I, I I want to get someplace different than here uh, I just don't think this is very conducive uh, I hate to see the fire department lose that space down there for trucks because they're convenient for fires that that happen down here they you know it's it's uh it's a lot easier to start out with something right here than it is from up on the hill if 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 you need something downtown um, the uh, if we can get that grant we can sell the house on Norris Street uh, we'll have more than enough money to do what it would take to get that into shape but I don't think because I don't think 60 grand will probably do it the way we have to do it because of uh, uh, guidelines and restrictions for government you know a, a thirty thousand uh, dollar project will cost us a hundred and fifty just the way it works um, so I mean I I hate to give it up, but that seems like that's whatever what one wants to do. Mr. Meyer? Uh, what does the fire department say about this as far as fire trucks downtown? Right? So uh, actually, we're still planning on using, can still so keep the fire truck there. We still keep we still keep the fire truck in there. This is just developing one bay. It's it's cleaning the whole whole station up, but it's just making one bay. And still pull the one out during meetings. There's yeah. only one truck in there now. Okay, but then but but for most meetings you'd pull it out. And we can. Yeah. 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 If it, if it was if, needed. If we need it, yeah. it can always be pulled out. And the the uh, fire chief has talked about that in the fire pen, and that's not a problem to them. So, Ms. Green? Well, this is a resolution authorizing the mayor of Eureka Springs to apply for and award it accept a grant from the USDA Rural Development. It, it doesn't say we have to move over there. M Mr. Mayor said that we could use this for something, you know, that we could use the building for something else. So I say let's just go ahead and apply for it and see what happens. And then we can make some decisions. Come out. Mr. Thomas? Uh, just two clarifications. In terms of the cost for renovation of the gym, the cost is $160,000. $50,000 has already been allocated. Had we got the grant, we would have had to come up with $40,000 because we would have had to match a third of the grant. So we would have been paying $90,000 already of the $160,000. Sell Norris Street and, you know, I mean, if, if the bids come in at less than $60,000 for Norris Street, I'm going to vote not to accept them anyway. So I anticipate that we would have pl uh, more than enough money from Norris Street to cover the gym renovation. And, and the second clarification is the vote to move downstairs to the gym was taken a long time before the grant came about, knowledge of the grant came about. It wasn't a, it wasn't a part of that vote. Ms. Snyder? Since the city attorney said we can always change this resolution at any point as needed, I make a motion we give the resolution a number and read it for passage and do with it as it calls for at the time. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Okay, Mr. Meyer. Ms. Green. Yes. Mr. Thomas. No. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Mr. McClung. Yes. Ms. Harmon. No. 3-3. Three, three. I vote yes. 4-3. Resolution number will be 756. A 
A resolution authorizing the mayor of Eureka Springs to apply for and if awarded accepted grant from USDA Rural Development. Whereas the city council has determined that the city of Eureka Springs meets eligibility requirements necessary to apply for a grant under the USDA Rural Development Community Facility Program and whereas the city of Eureka Springs would, if awarded, use the community facility grant to rehabilitate space for the purpose of moving all city meetings to a fully accessible facility. Whereas the city council recognizes the need for appropriate and accessible meeting facilities concurs with this project's importance and supports the mayor of Eureka Springs in the effort to proceed with the same. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the mayor is hereby authorized to submit an application a formal request to the USDA Rural Services Community Facility Grant Program for purposes of securing grant funds in the maximum amount of $50,000 to aid and assist the City of Eureka Springs. This 7525 grant is the maximum City of Eureka Springs matching $16,666 for a project maximum total of $66,666. The mayor is further authorized to administer the grant funds for the same project if awarded. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Yes, sir. Post uh, reading of that, which I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it, but it, it doesn't define a location. So why couldn't it be used if in the basement too? Oh, it's for fire stations. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. It is this, specifically this for fire stations. Yeah. Yeah. This is a rural development uh, under the fire stations. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. I mean, it, it didn't define that in there, so. Yeah. That's okay. well. That's part of the grant. Thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. All right. Uh, agenda setting. Miss Green. Um, I would like to put a discussion of the transient um, transients in town on a second. Okay. Ms. Snyder. I'd like to add an amendment and discussion to the new fireworks ordinance. I'll second that. Mr. Thomas. Yes, I have two. Uh, consideration of an entertainment district in Eureka Springs, and then also set a date for the mid-year budget review. I'll second Question. the first one. Yes. I'll okay. second the second one. That's both important. Okay, Ms. Harmon. That was I was going to do the same one, Bob. Did okay. Anybody else? All right. Uh, City Council comments. Sure. Mr. Thomas? Yes, I have two. <laughs> I, I just would like to point out that, you know, now that we have discussed, now that the City Council has voted to move to the gym, and now that obviously it looks like the City is in a financial position to make the necessary changes to make that area accessible, if you, if you don't make the gym accessible, you're probably going to have some ADA complaints because you're having activities down there that are not accessible. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to get one tomorrow because we've been planning to make it accessible and nobody's going to complain when you're planning to do it. But once you say we're not going to do it, you're going to have a complaint. And Kim and I went to the planning workshop and the lawyer there showed us on this big screen up in the front pages and pages and pages of ADA complaints that had been settled by cities out of court because as the lawyer said, you're at a real disadvantage if you go into court with a disabled person. 
and t you're telling them that you're not going to allow them into your facility. So we voted to move there. We have the money to move there, and there's no reason that we shouldn't. That was my first one. Okay. <laughs> I almost forgot the second one. <laughs> okay, so Friday, June 28th, will be the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. For most members of the LBGT community and its supporters, Stonewall is remembered as the date and the place that the movement for equality began. The Stonewall Uprising showed LBGT people around the world that not only do they have intrinsic worthiness and value as individuals, but also that the L and the B and the G and the T could rise up together as a single community. A community with numbers, the determination, and the strength to simply say, no more. So, with no planned activities and with no proclamation, I ask that everyone in the LBGT community and everyone who supports that community pause for a moment on Friday to remember the courage of the people at the Stonewall Uprising and to reflect on the legacy of Stonewall that endures even today. Thank you. Ms. Green? Well read, Bob, on that. Um, well, first of all, the reason that I voted for the last grant resolution is that the auditorium is still on the table, and I personally would like to move into the odd for the reasons that everybody's brought up, but other reasons. The other thing is I voted no on this pig ordinance, and, and the reason that I did was I am a firm believer that our ordinances need to be enforced, and this was the one that wasn't and during that time these people got more invested in their pets and in good conscience I just cannot take somebody's pets away from them and even though I believe in following the law it, it just I've had long nights thinking about this and I just in good conscience could not vote for that and I'm glad Mickey's back <laughs> Ms. Snyder <clears throat> First, I'd like to ask both newspapers, if at all possible, to please do a separate article in regards to the alderman who voted to remove her pets and make it a very in-depth article about how four people have determined that because it's not the kind of pet they want or they have or they prefer, they feel very free in removing the pets from this lady right here. These, these pets have done nothing to anybody. Absolutely zero. We had every base covered. We had rules, guidelines, cleanliness, the whole nine yards. We had it all. Rather than let these two, because they are a new breed, we are not changing a law for one family. We are updating laws, which is what you do. Because of that, this lady is going to have to lose her pigs. And these pigs are her pets. They are her babies. They snuggle with her. She snuggles with them. I have had one of them lay across my lap. I have taken my dog. And they have gotten along just fine. These are pets. These are not dinner, Terry. These are not swine. These are pets, and y'all better remember that the next time you have a cat, dog, bird, turtle. I don't care what it is. Think about that real hard and heavy. Think about your own kids. If someone said, I don't like your kind of kids, get rid of them. Good luck. And you are going to have a huge protest. If you don't have the nerve to put this to a vote to the people, you best better be prepared for the fallout you're going to get. Because I'm telling you now, the number in this town that are for leaving these pets alone is huge. And having run the elections for 22 years, you better believe I can call an election. I've never missed one yet. Keep that in mind if you guys want to keep your jobs, keep your position, keep your residency. You keep that in mind. That's her babies. And you're saying, I don't like your kind of babies. Screw them. That's what you're doing. You try to enforce this book, and I guarantee your ass is out. You have threatened my residency. I am saying I have the floor. 
I am through. Miss Harmon? I have nothing. Mr. Meyer? Okay. Mr. McClung, it's good to be here. All right. Um, we have uh, coming up in, for events, we have on 627, Crossfire Car Parade, 3 p.m. starting at the end of the Ozarks and going around the Upper Loop. On the 29th, uh, Drumming in the Park from 6 to 8 in the Basin Park. And on the 4th of July, we have the 4th of July Parade starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, <coughs> starting at the library and going on down to the courthouse. Then we have the crowning of Mr. Firecracker and Miss Fourth of July, water seed spitting contest, hot dog eating contest, and an apple pie contest. Uh, a lot of different activities on Fourth of July in and around the Basin Park and uh, area. And on the 6th of July, we have music in the park with Crusade and the Big Hog Band from 5 to 7 in Basin Park. And then also on the 6th of July, we'll have the City Fireworks at Sundown at Marble Flats. And that's it. If I can get a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved.